Hello, welcome to again another session of digital slide review and sign out. I'm Dr. Lewis Hassel, a faculty member at the University of Oklahoma Health Sciences Center, and our program is part of the Digital Anatomic Pathology Academy, a joint venture with Path Presenter uh, and the Digital Pathology Association. Our case today uh, comes from the realm of uh, soft tissue pathology, uh, but it intersects with uh, dermatopathology as well as uh, potentially other domains, general surgical pathology and so forth. Uh, the patient is a uh, relatively young man, 25 years old, who's had an enlarging subcutaneous mass around his shoulder. Um, and so as this began to enlarge, he uh, sought uh, attention and decided that it was time to have it removed. Uh, without much additional history, it came to us and was sectioned. As you can see, it's a several centimeter size mass. Um, and the lesion has a uh, fairly complex architecture, as you can see here at uh, low magnification, with uh, a number of uh, very uh, dilated spaces, maybe some hemorrhage in some of these, uh, some uh, organizations, and fairly sharp circumscribed margins, but maybe some carryover into other adjacent tissues. Uh, so it bears some uh, examination as to what uh, is going on here. So uh, we'll focus down on some of these more dilated areas here. And I think you can see that there's uh, perhaps a measure of uh, organization of the uh, uh, clotted blood here in some of these areas. This little area here, for example, shows uh, some features that would be consistent with uh, organizing thrombus um, uh, and uh, so forth. Uh, and then we see these uh, very thin, uh, thin walled or thinly uh, lined uh, spaces, which have some blood in them. Um, and the surrounding uh, tissue shows a mixture of areas of more myxoid-like tissue and some uh, spindle-shaped cells uh, as well. Uh, they're fairly uh, bland looking. There's not a lot of mitotic activity, but certainly a lesion of this size would raise concern for uh, potential malignancy. Uh, and we might think about vascular lesions, um, uh, possibly an, uh, angiosarcoma or something of that sort. Uh, or we might think about uh, uh, other stromal lesions that can have prominent vessels like uh, angioliomyoma or something of that sort. Um, and so uh, doing uh, some uh, differential uh, staining may be worthwhile. Uh, we might also think about uh, uh, fairly low-grade spindle cell lesions like uh, a solitary fibrous tumor, which can obviously occur in uh, any of a variety of sites, uh, as well as uh, other lesions uh, like uh, um, dermatofibrous sarcoma protuberans, for example, which this would be much more vascular than that. Uh, and you can see here there's a little bit of hemosiderin associated with this, uh, but other lesions maybe including synovial sarcoma and so forth. So a limited panel was done initially to sort of uh, characterize this, and it showed that it was positive with uh, uh, several of the muscle actins, um, but negative with Desmond. Uh, it was negative with uh, CD34, other than in the endothelial cells. Uh, so none of the uh, spindle-shaped cells stained with CD34 um, or STAT6, uh, of course, um, uh, fairly easily excluding um, the... Uh, solitary fibrous tumor differential. So with those uh, staining results, we came to the conclusion that this is most likely a uh, uh, myopericytoma. Um, and uh, that uh, is, uh, I think, an interesting diagnosis. We'll talk about that. But let's first discuss kind of some of the things that might be mistaken in a superficial site for a sarcoma. Uh, this obviously is one of them, uh, and uh, myofibroma-related lesion, somewhat similar, similar characteristics in some senses, can also be mistaken. But we also see cases where nodular fasciitis or myositis ossificans in a superficial location uh, can look uh, very mitotically active and disturbing. Some cellular dermatofibromas also can be uh, very uh, concerning for malignancy. They have tend to have infiltrative margins. Uh, they may have mitotic activity and so forth and some degree of atypia. Uh, intravascular papillar endothelial hyperplasia, which would be in the differential for this uh, particular case, uh, also uh, would be a consideration, uh, as well as uh, less frequently encountered uh, atypical leiomyomas 
and joint lymphoid hyperplasia with eosinophil I include here in this differential because there are times when that can look an awful lot like granulocytic sarcoma um, and with the hetero heterogeneous uh, uh, eosinophilia and so forth, that can be a concern. Certain variants of uh, granulomatosis uh, can also uh, masquerade uh, as uh, uh, epithelial sarcoma as well. And so I include that on this list of uh, tumors to be considered as well. Not a, none, of, none of these are particularly in the differential for our current case, uh, say perhaps maybe dermatofibroma or nodular fasciitis might be considered, and we consider glyomyoma, uh, but the majority of them would be in other circumstances. So uh, <clears throat> myopericytoma usually is a young adult or childhood lesion uh, more frequently encountered in males, and it's usually subcutaneous. Uh, it can involve the distal extremities, but also more centrally, head and neck, the proximal extremities. And uh, on occasion, particularly in children, uh, can involve some deep sites. Uh, and children also can have multiple lesions, uh, so that uh, is an interesting uh, phenomenon. Uh, this hemangiopericytomatous pattern that we saw in our uh, lesion is common, but it's not exclusive, nor is it... Uh, uh, uniformly or universally present. Uh, these lesions have been found to have uh, a fairly consistent uh, PRGFB, PRGFRB mutations and may also harbor uh, certain gene fusions in the SRFRELA uh, genes. Uh, as we indicated, it's uh, positive for actins uh, and caldosmon, uh, but it's negative with desmond, in the CD34, excuse my typo there as well as the myogenic uh, markers, myo-D1 and myogenin. It's negative with S100, C CF, GFAP, and cytokeratins, of course. And the differential often includes glomus tumor but it's because this uh, has some features similar to that. And especially if you saw it in the deep side, it could uh, quite easily mimic that uh, and be very difficult to dis distinguish uh, in some settings. Um, Picomas may be less likely, infantile fibrosarcoma, uh, not uh, particularly uh, of concern unless it's a myofibromatous type lesion. Now, I went to our files and thought it would be interesting to pull out a few additional examples just to see uh, kind of the morphologic spectrum. And so I've got three uh, slides here additionally to, to run through. Here's one, obviously, in the subcutaneous tissues. And here you see a little bit different pattern, a sort of mixture of myxoid and more cellular tissues with a little rim of uh, reactive, uh, or, or not reactive, but uh, neoplastic tissue here at the margin, which I think nicely illustrates the uh, pericytomatous nature of this lesion. So this little cleft-like space here in both of these uh, areas here is a vascular endothelialized, endothelialized space. And it's really these uh, perithelial uh, uh, cells that are uh, proliferating and forming the majority of the mass lesion. Um, looking a little bit more uh, internally here, you can see how some of these areas can have uh, slightly mixoid uh, or fibromatous uh, type areas, as you see here. Uh, maybe occasionally you'll get some clear cells and some bubbling. Uh, and those uh, lesions can be um, more challenging, uh, particularly considering uh, myofibromatous uh, type or you know, myofibroma type lesions. Uh, again, there's not a lot of cytologic atypia or concern for such, uh, nor is there much in the way of mitotic activity. Uh, going on to another example, uh, here's again an example from the skin, um, subcutaneous tissue, uh, and you can see again a mixture of uh, areas here. Now this lesion looks almost more like an organizing you know, thrombus, more like papillary endothelial hyperplasia with that's been completely recanalized because you see here we just have a few uh, residual uh, small vessels that could be recanalization type vessels. Uh, but in fact, this uh, was uh, positive with uh, the actins in the uh, stromal cells, um, whereas in a, uh, a papillary endothelial hyperplasia, we'd, you would not expect to find that uh, circumstance. So another uh, uh, variation on that theme. And then finally, uh, another, oh, excuse me. Now let's just uh, talk about the differential from myofibroma. Um, and uh, this nice little chart from uh, Dre and his colleagues from uh, uh, 2006 shows that um, 
these uh, concentric perivascular proliferation is probably one of the most helpful differentiator, differentiators. Um, and uh, gloma cells can be fairly prominent. Uh, in, the other feature that may be present uh, is uh, necrosis in myofibromas, but not ever seen in uh, uh, myopericytoma. So that's just a little uh, summary chart that you can refer back to or find that reference if you're uh, interested in reading further and seeing other examples. And then lastly, here's another example of a, a very solid type lesion that I think would be easily just uh, confused with um, a solitary fibrous tumor or something like that. It's got this very fibrous uh, background, not much in the way of uh, uh, vasculature. You can see a few maybe uh, thin areas here. But some of this is this sort of uh, concentric uh, whirling around uh, very uh, vestigial uh, residual blood vessels that are seen in this lesion as well. Uh, and so I think that's a useful pattern to have in your mind as well as you think about this lesion. Uh, so a little bit of the spectrum presentation, uh, molecular genetics and immunohistochemistry on this lesion to nicely summarize and present the case. So our final sign-out diagnosis is myopericytoma. Uh, benign lesion does not require any additional uh, therapy other than the surgical excision. And if you like this case, if you liked it, uh, please give us a like and uh, uh, so others will get a chance to see it. We welcome some new subscribers and appreciate the support that you provide our channel. Uh, we hope to continue to re release additional content as the days go on and hope that that will therefore uh, uh, catch you as a subscriber and uh, able to get early access to those uh, 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 videos. So thank you so much for joining me. And uh, until next time, uh, be well and uh, do good work.